Hi, so this topic that I'll explain today is something that has totally changed the game for me. I'm literally getting paid to wait for the prices that I want in the stock market. And it's not a small amount of money. On an annualized rate, it varies between 8 and 20% return on my cash. This isn't a risky strategy at all. It requires a good understanding, but once you know how this works, it is an opportunity, especially when prices are high, to make some good cash flow. Now, don't be scared of the name of this strategy. It scared me at first as it sounded way too complicated as well. The name of the strategy is called selling put options. Now, don't click away. This isn't that hard and it actually doesn't have any risk to it. Literally, if you have the right attitude to this strategy, you will get paid to wait. If you're new to my channel, well, a big welcome as this is a fantastic topic that will help a lot of people. It is a little more advanced, so if you are new to investing, just learn this now and as you become more comfortable, you can implement this strategy. So a big problem that I was facing was that there is nothing to buy. My cash pile has built up and is now close to 50% of my investment portfolio. This is actually totally okay, as I am waiting for a crisis or an event to give me the prices that I want. Look, I'm not trying to time the market, I just don't want to overpay for anything. And for those of you who have followed me for a while will know that my buy prices for companies are fairly low and for some companies a long way away from the current stock market. But this cash will serve me well because when the time comes, the bargains that I will be getting will be worth the wait. But all of this cash has just been sitting there, making 0% in my trading account and waiting. Inflation just eating away at it. Now, what if someone would pay for me to wait for the prices that I want? Wait for the prices of my companies to reach the levels that I want to invest. Sounds too good to be true, right? No one would do that. Well, I think I solved it. Now, like I said, this seems difficult to grasp at first, but let it sink in over a few days or weeks and I think you will get it. When I'm talking about options, what that means is essentially buying or selling a piece of paper with a contract on it. Of course, it isn't a real piece of paper, it's on the internet, but an option is just a contract document. Now, on this contract document, there is someone buying the document and someone selling the document. The lingo for these documents are named call options and put options. And for the strategy that I'm going through with you today, what we're going to look at is the put options. Okay, so a put option is a document that gives the owner of the document the right to sell their shares to a person who wrote the document at a certain price within a certain time frame. Let's definitely do an example for this one because this one is important. Okay, so let's say that I want to buy Alibaba shares and I have analyzed the company. I like what they're doing, I've gone through my checklist, I've valued the company and I want to invest, but the share price is too high for me. My valuation tells me that I think a good buy price would be, well, with a good margin of safety, would be about $220 a share, but the price is say $260. Now there is another person on the other side of the world in England and his name is Ed. Now, Ed has 100 Alibaba shares already, but Ed is a nervous person. Ed jumps in and out of stocks all the time. He is scared that the US-China relations are going to get worse, he gets caught up in the news and in all the negative headlines. But right now, he doesn't want to sell his shares, but if the price starts falling, he doesn't want to lose too much money either. So he would happily cut his losses if the price went to say $220 because Ed thinks if the stock price goes to $220, it will probably keep falling past $220. So he thinks if he can save his investment at $220, that, that would help him sleep at night. Okay, now this is where we can both get a win-win outcome. So I go to Ed and I say, hmm, I see you have 100 Alibaba shares and you're a bit worried about the future. You would hate to see the price fall dramatically. It would be nicer for you to have a safety net. And Ed then says, yes, I would love a safety net, I am scared. Okay, no problem, Ed, let's make a deal. How about if the price falls to say $220 between now and, I don't know, mid-May, I'll buy your Alibaba shares off you if you want. You don't have to sell them to me, but you can if you want at $220. Now, Ed thinks that is a great deal. He has the option to dump his shares to me anytime he wants between now and the 14th of May and he knows the price he will get is $220. But then I say, if you want to have this security, well, you have to pay me a little money for this deal. Ed rolls his eyes and says, oh look, I'll give you $100. So I think, mm, that's not a bad deal, let me just think about it. And a few days go by, and the Alibaba share price has a few negative days in a row. Now, Ed is getting really nervous. He watches the stock prices every hour. So, 
he comes back to me and says, all right, how about I give you $500 to make this contract? Now I do that calculation. $500 of the total value of 22,000 because it's 100 Alibaba shares at $220 each. This is 2.2% return for an 80 day contract. I'm pretty happy with that. I tell Ed, let's do it. I'll write the contract and you pay me $500. Ed agrees, transfers me the money and I give him the contract. So Ed was playing the role of the buyer of my contract. This is called buying a put option. I was playing the role of the seller of my contract. So this is called selling a put option. Look, don't worry too much about the terminology. The only role we want to be is the seller of put options. Okay, now to show you what this looks like and explain what is happening in this contract, I made nearly this exact same deal in real life. This is a trade confirmation, meaning I sold a put option to someone. It, it wasn't Ed, by the way, it was some unknown person. So this trade confirmation says, I sold one put Feb, 2021. Now, something really important to note is that options are traded in bundles of 100 shares at a time. So one put option is actually 100 shares. So I had to write a contract for 100 shares as the minimum. And if I wanted a larger number, say two put options, well, that would be 200 shares. So this first line is really just telling me how many put options I'm talking about. And in this case, it's just one. The second line shows me the ticker symbol, Baba, which is Alibaba. Then it says at 4.70000 is the price of the contract per share. This is the money that Ed has to give me per share. So $4.70 times 100 shares is $470. Three USD is the commission for this trade. That's what my brokerage takes and another fee of 0.04 or a cent, so not too bad really. Then we have the strike price, 220.0000. This is a really important number. This is the price where Ed can sell the shares to me. He would never do this until the stock price fell to $220 or lower. I mean, it would be stupid of him to sell me the shares now at $220 when he could just sell them on the open market at $240. If he did sell them to me, I could just sell them the same day, pocket the $20 and make that profit. But he has the option to if he wants to, but he won't. Ed is a bit weird, but he's not an idiot. Then we have the expiry date, which says the 19th of February, 2021. That's the last day Ed gets to decide. Now Ed gets the choice. I can't refuse. I have to buy the shares off Ed if he wants to sell them to me. But this is not a problem for me because I want the shares and I want them at $220. Then the 466.96 USD is the cash that I got immediately when the contract is sold. So that is an upfront payment for me that goes into my trading account. So I got $466.96 and all I did was agree that I would buy Ed's shares of him at $220 if he wants to sell them to me between now and the 19th of February. Now I did this put option back in November and there are three possible outcomes for this 80 day period. So the first possibility is the price of Alibaba shares in this period go up. If this happens, well, Ed isn't going to sell me the shares at $220, but he still paid me the $466. I get $466, but I don't get any Alibaba shares. This is okay with me because I decided that I only wanted to buy them at $220. I'm not interested at a higher price. Essentially, I got paid to wait for the price, but the price never came. The second possibility is the price of Alibaba shares stay about the same. Now, if this happens, well, Ed still isn't gonna sell me the shares at $220 because the stock price is $240 still, but he still paid me the $466. Again, I don't get any shares, but at least I got the 466. Like I said, I only want to get the shares at $220. So again, I got paid to wait. And the third possibility is the price actually gets down to $220 in this period. If this happens, well, Ed has decided that he will enforce the contract and sell me the shares. I don't have a choice. I have to buy the shares at $220. Now this is great because that's exactly what I wanted to happen in the first place. And guess what? Ed still pays me 466. But now I have 100 shares at the price I wanted, plus an extra $466 in my account. Now, Ed doesn't have to sell the shares to me. For example, the price actually dipped below $220 for one day on Christmas Eve, but the contract wasn't executed. I think this is because it only went a tiny bit below $220. So it isn't guaranteed, even if you get the price you want, but I still get the $466. 
I think if you really want the shares, the price has to go below the strike price and stay there for more than a day. I'm not exactly sure on this as it was a strange thing to happen, especially on my first attempt. So I'm still experimenting here. If anyone could actually shed some light on this in the comments, that would be really great. Now this entire selling put option strategy is the same strategy used by Warren Buffett, Phil Town, and I'm sure plenty of other investors as well. So do you like this strategy? If you like the strategy, please hit that like button for me so I can see whether you're actually on the same page as me. Now there is the scenario where the price goes down and the stock price could just keep going down, maybe to say $160. So Ed in this transaction is a very happy person as even if the price goes to $160, well, Ed can sell his shares to me at 220 because that is what we've agreed. Now this might sound like a big issue for me, but it isn't, let me explain. If I didn't make this contract with Ed, what was going to happen? Well, because I'm a big fan of Alibaba and I know that at $220 is a good price, well, I was going to buy at about $220 regardless. I would have then watched the stock price fall to $160 and I'd still be holding the Baba shares. Would I care? Not at all. So why don't I care? Well, it's because I am confident in my valuation of the company and I know that if I just wait, the price will be fine. It's a good company making lots of money and buying any stock is pretty much the exact same situation anyway. I decide on the price I want to pay and then I buy when I get that price. The price often goes lower anyway the minute I buy something, but I don't really care. I'm in it for the long term. The value of the company will be reflected in the share price eventually. So in every way I look at it, even if I didn't make this deal with Ed, I was going to buy the shares at about $220 anyway. So I might as well get paid for waiting for the price that I want. So your mindset is actually really critical with this strategy. If you are a truly long-term investor who feels very confident in the company and your valuation, then this strategy will make you extra cash. You'll get paid to wait for the great companies that you want at the prices that you want. It's literally the exact same thing you were doing anyway, which was sitting in cash waiting for good prices. Another thing you must do is have enough cash in your account to actually buy the shares if the contract gets executed. And this is very important. If you don't have enough cash, your brokerage account will lend you money at crazy high interest rates and you definitely don't want to do that. Only do the strategy if you have the cash in your account for the length of the contract. So when the contract is in place, make sure you always have enough cash to cover that contract. So normally the word volatility scares most investors. They don't like the ups and downs of the market, but this selling put option strategy can actually help us. See, in the options market, when you are looking to see what prices someone will buy for your put option contract, well, the more volatile the price movement of the company, the better the deal you can make. Okay, so this is the stock chart of a company called Biogen. Biogen is a pharmaceutical company that I like that even Berkshire Hathaway invested in in 2020. Now look at that big spike. There was good news, then there was bad news, but the issue was just a short-term thing. Something that won't matter over the long term. But because of this big price fluctuation, the price that I could sell a put option for became very attractive. So I had decided through my research that $240 is a good price for Biogen and a really good price was $200. That would be the price I would love to invest in the company. So I was able to sell a put option that expires on the 19th of March, which was about 108 days away from when I made the contract. I was able to sell it for $930 with the strike price of $200. So if I did buy the 100 shares, it would cost me $20,000 and I would get an extra $930 on top, which is 4.65% return on my money for doing exactly what I want, which is waiting for a good price. If I was to put that as an annualized figure just for fun, well, that would be 16.6%. Pretty great for just waiting. I was able to get this higher than average rate because the volatility of the stock price was high. Therefore, apparently it was riskier for the day traders. Good news for me as I would definitely be buying at $200. The reason this happens is because a lot of day traders and options traders see price volatility as a sign of weakness in a stock which is pretty stupid really, because the value of the company doesn't change every second like the stock price. Anyway, for this difference in attitude, people who are wanting to buy my put options will pay more for my contract. Sounds good to me. All I want to do is buy my company at the price that I've decided anyway. 
My strategy at the moment is to look at the option contracts that expire around two to four months in time, as I think that is about the best return on investment for the time frame. If the time frame is shorter, say two weeks, well, you just don't get much return on investment. For longer contracts, you do get better premiums. Now, I had a look at all the options contracts of the companies that I'm interested in, and I found that over 12 months, well, you do get a better return, but that is four times as long, and the return isn't four times as good. It's actually only a few percentage points better. Plus, this means I can reassess the investment each quarter, listen to the company speak, and look at the financials again. So I think the sweet spot is about the two to four month time frame. Now I'm also wanting to get over 2% return as a minimum over this two to four month time frame. So that is really only gonna happen with companies that aren't too far away from my buy prices. The further away the current stock price is from my buy prices, well, the smaller the premium I get. This is because the chance that the stock will fall a long way in just that two to four month period, well, the chances become less likely, the less premiums people are willing to pay. Let me give you an example. I really want to invest in MasterCard at $220. The stock price is nowhere near that. So at the moment, I would only get about a 0.2% return on the contract. That is tiny and not worth tying up my cash. Remember, I have to be able to pay for every contract I make with my own cash in the account. The other thing to be aware of is that if the stock price is a large number, say Amazon's $3,200, well, the option, option contract is always 100 shares. So 100 shares of Amazon at 3,200 is $320,000. That is a large amount of money to be tying up in a contract and most people won't have $320,000 spare in their account. But if the stock is small, you might have to take out more than one contract. For example, DHT stock price is about $5. 100 shares at $5 is only $500. Well, that's not a lot. Maybe I would prefer 20 contracts of DHT, which would mean $10,000 would be invested if the strike price was hit. So some stocks are going to be out of your league because the stock price is too high and, the, and buying 100 shares is just too much money. And some stocks are going to be too small. So you will need to remember to increase the number of contracts. This entire strategy actually helps you make unemotional decisions and get paid for it. Have you ever loved a company and watched its price fall? You said that you would buy it if it ever got below $220, but when the time comes to actually buy, well, you think, hmm, maybe it'll go lower. I'll just wait until it's $180 as this thing, it just keeps falling. And then some good news comes out and it shoots back up to $260. Well, if you just did what you said you were going to do, you would have bought. Does it really matter if after you buy it, the price keeps falling? You know what it's worth and you know the company is worth more than what you paid, and you know you will hold it for a long term. So then what does it matter? So this is the mindset you need to pull off this strategy. It is more actually in your head than anything. And this strategy will help you make decisive decisions before the market craziness affects your mind. So it's protecting yourself from silly, emotional, irrational decisions because a falling market plays tricks on your mind. I like to take the emotion out of my decisions and this strategy literally pays me to wait for the prices that I want and the decision is already made. Okay, to sum it up, selling put options is a great way to make money on your cash. You are getting paid to wait. You have to have the right long-term mindset. You must keep enough cash to cover any contract. Now, volatility will give you better prices and I think the two to four month time frame is the best. 2% per contract is my goal. Look, that isn't annualized, that's just per contract. And a great, it's a great way to take emotion out before the falling market emotional jitters that you'll have. Okay, now in upcoming videos, I'll do actual demonstrations of exactly how to sell put options in both the Saxa Trader Go platform and the interactive brokers platform as well. So you can see exactly how to do this yourself where to click and how to make sure it all works. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss these videos. Leave a comment if you love or hate the strategy and I will see you in that next video.